All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the whole full elect here in this word in truth and sincerity. All right, so, you know, back at our again, you know, to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right, who are the uh, 12 tribes of Israel according to the Bible. You know, and according to the Bible, you know, um, we're, in the, we're in the last days, man. All right, and as you can see, different prophecies happening are right, indicating that we're in the last days, you know, like the scriptures say. <coughs> Forgive me. Yeah, so we're in the last days, like the scripture indicate that we would be, you know, and um, pretty much, you know, all these things that we see happening, you know, it's pretty much a, uh, it's pretty much prophecy before our Lord Yahweh Shah return. You know, Yahweh Shah being who the world called Jesus Christ. All right, his true name is Yahweh Shah in the name of his father. Our, our Heavenly Father is Yahweh, all right? And like I just said, you know, what you see going on, you know, all the chaos, you know, all the inflation, all right? You know, people losing their damn minds, you know, this is all the things that should, that, that that's supposed to happen, all right, before Yahweh shall come. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna start from this scripture right here. I know it's in Luke, where the Lord pretty much say this, When people speak of our Lord, they talk about him like he's some uh, a cuddly bear, like you know what I'm saying, like he's some cuddly bear, you know, the the, the, the Lord, he's, he's just gonna come, you know, with kisses and hugs and save everybody, you know. But the Lord coming with fire, man. This is Luke chapter 12 and verse 49, and it says, I come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it already be kindled? You know, and that's what Yahweh is coming with, he's coming with fire, man. All right, literally. You know, you read the book of Isaiah, the 66th chapter, and then if I'm not mistaken, the 15th verse, it say that, you know, the Lord is going to come with fire and his chariots like a whirlwind, all right? And Yahweh Shah is coming with just that, to render to render unto everybody judgment, you know, because this world is long overdue for judgment, all right? These people are proud as hell, you know? And why is that? Because, you know, they're doing their little wickedness, you know, and because because uh, a judgment is not, uh, you know, executed speedily, you know, like the scriptures say, the hearts and the sons of men is set to do evil, you know? So pretty much because, you know, when they do wickedness, they're not judged for it, you know, immediately. Their mindset is, you know, we're gonna continue to keep doing it. Or we're gonna continue to do it, all right? I mean, we're not being checked for it, so why, hey, we might as well keep going. And that's the mindset of the, uh, of the world, man. You know, we're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep going, all right? But little do they know that Yahweh Shai, who's coming in the name of Yahweh, and in, in the authority of Yahweh, you know, is going to you know render unto everybody their judgment, you know. This is um Ezekiel. So I cannot Ezekiel, Ecclesiastes. All right. Now, granted, you do got some of our people that are awake that knows you know that that, that know something is going on. You know, hence that video of the lady, you know, talking about you know stock up. All right. Pretty much, she had a, uh, she had some kind of knowledge, she had some kind of, uh, in, you know, insight on what's going on. But you know, our people, they, they, they don't want to repent. You know, they want to, they want to live here in America, Babylon the Great. You know, with all the perks, all right, in a roundabout way. You know, they're, um, they're content with captivity. See, when we come out here, all right, we're doing this for the kingdom, man. All right, hence why we come out here to preach the kingdom of heaven to our people. You know, those that are going to listen, they're going to listen. You know, this is um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse uh, 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. All right? And it starts with the man. All right? The fear of Yahweh by Shimei Awashai and keep his commandments. The world, the world is going totally opposite of that. Why? Because the base man is in rulership. Esau, Edom. All right? The so-called white man. All right, and his agenda, his objective is to totally push contrary to what the Lord set up. All right, hence the homosexuality, you know, hence the bestiality, the pedophilia, you know, hence the, um, the transhumanism agenda. I had, I had watched a video yesterday, pretty much, Esau, you know, hey, <laughs> he's puffing his chest, he, he, he's puff, puff, puffing his chest at the most high. Slock you for that, twist the words. But he's puffing up his chest at the most high. All right? 
because you no, know, within his sentence that he was speaking, he said, not some God that's in the clouds, but our clouds. So Esau is being proud, man. You know, and this is the energy that he's pushed toward uh, um, in the world. So Yahweh Shimei Al Shai is getting ready to uh, check all that, man. This is um, verse 14. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So, you know, if you repented and you follow the Lord to the best of your ability, then the Lord's going to give you or going to judge you accordingly. All right. But if you're doing wickedness, all right. And you're proud about it. The Lord is going to judge you accordingly also, man. So, pretty much, if you want to say, everybody's in their lot. You know, that's why we pray that we're in the right spot, man. This is Revelation, chapter 22, and verse... Um, Shalaka, not 22. I'm, I'm going to say maybe 21. Like, bear with me. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, verse, uh, it was 22. 22 and 11. I'm going to start from 10, though. It says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. You know, the prophecies. Because this is what's happening. This is what matter. All right? For the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work, as his work shall be. All right? So all this wickedness you see going on, sometimes it makes you think, like, dang, these people are proud. Is there any judgment coming to it? Well, at least the person on the outside, of, uh, uh, of course. But us that, that, that are in this truth, you know, it's a matter of patience. All right? We got to wait for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh to judge these people, man, because... You know, the Lord got prophecies, the Lord got, you know, things that got to be fulfilled still before, you know, he, you know he's going to move on these people. You know, because Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is a man of his word, all right? He don't lie. But just know, surely that when these things come to pass, all right, it's not going to slow down, neither is, gonna, is it, is it going to stop. All right, it's not going to slow down, neither is it going to stop Salaki. That's what I was trying to say, you know? <clears throat> this is right here, Second Ezra, chapter um, fifteen and verse one. You know, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. All right. So we see we see uh, one common thing that's always throughout the scriptures is the word prophecy, man. All right, because that's what the, that's what the scriptures you know center around, man. No matter of fact, that's what this whole world is centered around, man. Prophecy. All right, centering around Yahweh Shah, man, because Yahweh Shah is in the volume of the book. You know, so as you can see, prophecy, man, is in the forefront of everything. You know, and that's our hope. That's what we depend on. It's the prophecies of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You know, because we know again that the Lord is a man of His word that He won't, that He don't lie. You know, it says, "Which I will put in thy mouth," saith the Lord, showing you that every word that the script, that every word in the scriptures is inspired by the Lord. You know, because Jake have this saying out there that man wrote that Bible, man wrote that book. Or we can't validate that book, you know. But the Lord put his spirit on men to write these words, man. You know, and if you don't believe that, then I don't know what to tell you, you know. It don't get much simpler than that. The Lord put his, his spirit on men to write that book. As a matter of fact, in the book of Peter, you know. Let me see if I get it real quick. In the book of Peter, what did it say? It says that um <clears throat> that they were given by the inspiration of the Most High. Also in the book of Job, it says it says that there's a spirit in men. You know, we're paraphrasing it, that there's a spirit in men. You know, and, and it's the inspiration of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Loosely paraphrasing, you know, but um. It's in the book of uh, uh, Peter. Let me see if I can find it real quick. <clears throat> um, yep. Call Yahweh Shimei Shai. First Peter chapter one and verse twenty. 
verse 19, it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arrives in your hearts, and that day star is Yahweh Shah, man. You know? Because in the book of Revelation, it says that he is the, he is the morning star, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if I can find that real quick. And I'm going to go back to that second Ezra 15. I just want to get these scriptures to, you know, to prove what I'm saying. You know? But this is Revelation. Okay, Yahweh Shai said that he's the morning star. All right? <clears throat> this is um, Revelation chapter uh, 22 and verse 16. And it says, I, Yahweh Shai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i am the root of the of salaki i am the root and the offspring of david showing you that yahweh Shai came through david's lineage all right the offspring of david all right through his physical seed you know and the bright and morning star you see so yahweh Shai is that bright and morning star so when you go back to peter first peter where it says we have also a more sure uh, assured word of prophecy and there go that word prophecy again like i was saying you know um the word prophecy you know, hey, this is what our existence, you know, is centered around. All right, the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. So we have a more sure word of prophecy, which means what? That we're not going to be let down if we trust in these prophecies, man. All right? And that's why I said, you know, it's a thing of patience because, you know, we know that the Lord is not going to, uh, uh, you know, force his word, so to speak, to come. All right? It's going to happen at its appointed time. All right? Um, It says... We have also a more a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as into a light that shineth in a dark place until the uh, day dawn, and the day uh, uh, salaki, and the day star arise in your hearts. All right, and, you know when you repent. All right, and, and you seek the Lord. You know Yahweh Shai is you know is within us now, man. That's why the scripture says that we are the temple of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You know because they dwell in they, they dwell in us, salaki. You know, I'm still waking up, man. <laughs> you know, I, I'm still waking up. I didn't have no coffee this morning. You know, the, you know, a little pick-me-up, but it is what it is, man. Do a spirit prayer, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. I'm going to get to his camp lesson. All right? It says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Why is that? Because the Lord had it. <clears throat> the Lord, the Lord's prophecy is what, you know, he gave to a uh, uh, man through, through his Holy Spirit. All right, because like, because the, the the prophecies, you know, as people would put it, they try to have their own breakdowns to it, like the Christians. Or right, for example, the Christians, you know, when they read Acts the tenth chapter, they break that down as if you know that means that they can eat anything. All right, when they break down John three sixteen, that's their private interpretation, man. You know, but you no, know, the elders and apostles, you know, of Great Millstone, the Lord, the Spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah worked with those men. All right, and, and their teachers before them. All right, but the elders. The reason I bring up the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone is because, you know, back in what 2000, 2001, when uh you know the 9/11 thing happened, you know um, you know, like they bring like 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 they bring out, you know, there was a lot of people that fell out of the truth during that time period, you know, and the elders and the, you know the apostles they kept on pushing. Why? Because they had the Lord's Spirit upon them. Or to keep going, you know. So that's why I wanted to, you know, say for that scripture is that, you know, although Christianity was out at that time, you know, you still had the apostles and the elders still pushing, man, showing you that, you know, the spirit of the Lord was on them, you know. And yeah, you also had, uh, you know, these other religions, you know, that was out there, but this is the truth. This is the true word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, and it's got to be broken down the right way. That's what I'm getting to with it, you know? Damn bugs, man. <clears throat> it says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, you see? It wasn't by the will of man, it was by the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. You see? So it wasn't because man was so great that we got this book today. You know? It was because Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah chose 
no particular men to put his spirit on, all right, to write these prophecies, you know? So when we see things like prophecy written in scripture, when we see things like, you know, the mark of the beast written in scriptures, all right, these are the things that we got to look forward to, man. Especially seeing that the mark of the beast is the, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be what, you know, ushers in, so to speak, the end of Esau's rulership, man. This is 2nd Esdras, chapter, um, Salaki. Let me go back to the 15th chapter. 2nd Esdras, chapter 15, and verse 1, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. You know, the words of the Lord are faithful and true. You know, it's going to come to pass whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, man. You know? It's a bit windy out here. Yeah, so continuing on, it says, <clears throat> so continuing on, it says, Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity, like you, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against you. All right, because the, the, the unfaithful, the unbelievers of our people, you know, the Lord says to not let them, you know, trouble us, man. Because, hey, they're going to get what's coming. Like I'm about to read, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, you know. So all of our wicked people, those that sold out, you know, and then those down to the ones that don't believe, you know, just plainly don't believe, the most high, you know, is just going to destroy them, you know, on this side during Jacob's trouble. And then ultimately when Yahweh shall return, all right, he's going to zap these people, man. All right? All right, these Edomites, so-called white people, you know, they're going to get their judgment regardless of what comes, man. They, their judgment is sealed. They're through, you know. But the, for those of our people, you know, um, let me show this real quick. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, all right, those of you that hear this word, all right, you need to repent, all right, because when the Lord returns, matter of fact, before the Lord returns, he's going to send a fire on this earth, all right, tribulation, famine, all right, you know, bloodshed. All of this is going to be sent by Yahweh Shai, man. Because remember, you know, Yahweh Shai was given all power in all in earth and, in earth and in heaven, man. So the Lord's been given all power. Therefore, therefore, all right. Know for sure that you know he's the one who's going to be sending these plagues, man. Who's going to be sending uh, uh, uh like Who's going to be sending all right? All this turmoil on earth before he before he returns, man. And then you know when he returns, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be hell on earth, man. All right, y'all sure gonna be zapping niggas, man. You know. It says, <clears throat> it says, behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. All right, going back to you know when I, when I when I opened the lesson, speaking of, all right, how you is coming with judgment. You know, because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai, they fed up with these people, man. You know, the only thing pretty much holding uh, holding uh, the Heavenly Father back is pretty much His Word. You know, because like I, like I said, the Lord is a man of His Word. He won't lie. But altogether, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai is fed up with the, uh, with the uh, wickedness here in Babylon the Great. As I'm about to read, verse 6, For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. All right. So, you know, the Lord is going to, you know, wait for them to fulfill their measure. And that brings and that brings back to mind. All right. If I'm not mistaken, um, I forget pretty much, you know, in, in, in the Old Testament, where the Lord pretty much, you know, let the uh, the Amorites, kind the Amorites, you know, fulfill their wickedness. All right. Before he, uh, you know, destroyed them. Same thing here in Babylon the Great. The Lord is going to let these people fulfill their wickedness. All right. Fulfill their unbelief. All right, to the full measure, and then he's going to destroy them. All right. Um, continue reading, and it says, verse seven. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, in which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things. You know, the Lord is not holding his tongue no more. Why? And how you know that is because the prophets are out here rebuking this madness, man. Because, hey, the mouth of the Lord are the prophets, you know. 
and you, and you can read about that in Hosea, the 12th chapter, you know, in the 10th verse, Hebrews 1 and 1, you know, that the Lord spoke by the mouth, by the mouth of his prophets, you know. So when it says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, it's talking about the prophets coming out here and preaching this word and rebuking this madness. It says, which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just con uh, complain continually. You know, and that brings back to mind the book um, of Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, where it says, you know, to set a, part, uh, set a mark upon the men that sigh and cry, you know, uh, uh, of the abominations thereof, man. All right, and the men, you know, also the believers, the rest of the believers, man, you know, are sighing and crying because of the wickedness being done here in, in, in America, Babylon the Great. All right. Now, this is the chief place where wickedness is being um, being exalted from. All right. This is Esau Edom's throne right here, man. You know, therefore us being in the midst of this place, you know, we're sighing and crying, man. All right. Um, what's that nigga name? Um, Lakeith Stanfield. Nigga was dressed, totally dressed up as a woman. You know, brother sighed and cried about that, man. All right. Uh, uh, niggas like, um, you know, NBA young boy wearing makeup, you know, bro brother signing crying about that, man, because this, this is our people doing that shit, you know, and we desire to see a righteous kingdom, we just, hey, we desire to see our people in order, you know, so when we see our people like that, it's like, damn, you know, when, when, when is this going to be over, oh Lord, all right, because Esau, all right, is paying these niggas to do all this shit, man, you know, one thing about Jake is that, you know, they'll sell out for some damn money. As a matter of fact, let me get that account at first Maccabees. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. I believe it's in the first chapter. Our people, you know, totally sold out, man. Yeah, so this is first Maccabees, chapter one. Showing you that our people sold out back then. They always, you know, they always did it. Showing you that, you know, everybody's in there a lot today. The sellouts are back here today. God damn. Salak here. The sellouts are back in their lots today. Alright. The believers are back in their lots today. The Edomites, they're back in their lots today. So everybody's back here, you know, for their judgment. You know, Salak, everybody's back here to do what they do and to receive their judgment, whether it be good or bad. Um I'm gonna go to uh start at verse seven. To just get the whole point of everything, you know. Verse 7, it says, So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. Talking about Alexander the Great. Because when you read in prophecy, all right, Alexander the Great, I mean, it's like Alexander in the book of Daniel, you know, is that leopard, all right? That uh, the, in Daniel 7 chapter, that leopard represents the Greek Empire and Alexander, all right? And, you know, he fulfilled what he was supposed to do within prophecy and then the Lord took him out. All right. Hence, you know, so Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. You no. Know? During that 12 year period was the kingdom of the Greeks being set up, man. And then he hey, he died. The Lord took him out and his servants bear rule every one in his place. You know, his, his four generals. All right. Because after Alexander the Great died, his four generals, you know, took over his kingdom. You know, his kingdom was parted unto them, you know. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves, so that their sons after them, many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth, showing you that the Greeks were Edomites. Because, you know, in Malachi, the first chapter and the fourth verse, it says that Esau, Edom, is the border of all wickedness. So when Alexander's generals, you know, took over the kingdom, evils were multiplied on the earth. And the wickedness was flourishing, man. So showing that the Greeks, you know, in that time period were, uh, were Edomites. Alexander the Great was an Edomite. All right. And it says, and there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus, the king, who had been in hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days went out there of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, See, same thing. In those days, when out of Israel, wicked men, all right, who persuaded many to go against Yahweh by Shimei Awashah, you know. Let me let me keep reading. It says, who persuaded many men, saying, 
Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. All right. And that's what Jake been doing, you know, since the you know, beginning of time, man. All right, selling out to the enemy. They they sold out. They sold out to the uh, to the white man a long time ago, man. But they're back here doing it again. All right, these celebrities. All right, and even in, within Israel, you got sellouts, man. And it's, and it's not hard. All right, to call them out, to see it, man. All right, you got the ISUPK General Yohanna. All right, Bishop Nate. He, you know, you know, he sold out. You know, because he teach, he's teaching against the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah because. You know, there's a video of him back in the 90s teaching the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. All right, but all of a sudden, you know, he, hey, he's teaching against those names. He's mocking them now, man. You know, so we know that, you know, in these days, men are going to sell out all right, to the enemy. You know, we just pray, you know, and, and, you know, pray and hope that we're not the ones, you know, to be in that lot. All right, because we know that, you know, there are still tests and trials that, hey, that, that is to come. All right, the mark of the beast, that got to come, you know, to, uh, to try us. You know, as a matter of fact, when I see that, man, I also want to show, I like to show visuals, you know. I like to show visuals, you know, when I teach because it brings out what I'm saying, you know, even more. All right. Yeah, so what you see right there, you know, is a mark of the beast according to Revelations, the 13th chapter and the 16th verse. All right. And pretty much this is the end game of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. All right. Because whether you believe it or not, everything happening right now. All right. The war. Going on with uh, Russia and Ukraine, so, like, I don't mean to digress, but the war going on in Russia and Ukraine, all right, what's going on over there? They're using that as an excuse, you know, the, the you know, to inflate the economy, man. You know, and we understand that, you know, that means that a dollar is losing its value, all right, and, and that that's the plan of the elite is to crash the dollar. Because if they can crash the dollar, then that means that hey, they can bring in the MOTB, all right, the RFID chip, man. All right, they can bring that to pass, you know, and. Like I stated, that's their end goal, you know. As a matter of fact, going back to the point where um, I'm going to finish up on that point in 2nd Ezra. Speaking of the wicked men going out of Israel, I might change gears right here. Um, yeah, I'm going to switch gears in a minute. Speak a little bit on the MOTB, you know. 2nd Ezra, chapter 15 and verse Verse 9, and therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. You know, because, hey, America got a lot of blood of our people here, man. You know, going back to, you know, when our people arrived on slaves, even before the slave ships arrived of the uh, southern kingdom, you know, Esau was killing the northern kingdom, man. The so-called Native Americans and the Latinos, all right, they were they were warring against the white man, so-called white man, all right, when he got here, because Esau is a greedy dog, all right. They came here to sell the land, they saw the riches, and they, you know, they got greedy, you know, and they, and, and they killed our brothers, man. The Book of Habakkuk who tell you that he's a proud man and he neither keep it that home, all right. Esau is everywhere, man, all right. Rape, robbing, and uh, pillaging people land, man, you know. So when he got here. When, when Esau Edom, the so-called white man, got here, all right, he shed a lot of blood of the so-called Native Americans, and, and he didn't stop there, all right. Then he went to Africa, gathered our people up, gathered us up, all right, the so-called uh, Negroes, West Indians, and Haitians, all right, gathered us up and brought us, you know, to this side of the world and put more hell on the tribes, man, you know. But pretty much, you know, hey, that was all according to prophecy, of course, you know, but there's a lot of blood that's been shed on America. So that's why America is going to go out the way it's going to go out, by way of thermonuclear fire, you know, because the Lord is going to completely eradicate this place from the face of the earth, okay? It says, <clears throat> Shalaki, it says, um, verse 11, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, stretched out arm, that mighty hand is Yahweh Shah, all right, because Yahweh Shah is sitting on the right hand of Yahweh. And he's going to be our salvation. You see? So, see, you can see that Yahweh Shai is everywhere within prophecy. You just got to know when to decide. You, you just, you just got to know how to de how to decipher it. All right? Yahweh Shai is everywhere, man. You know? He's the hand of Yahweh. See? But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. All right? 
because in ancient Egypt, there was an angel, all right, that was executing that judgment on behalf of Yahweh. You know, that angel was Yahweh Shah. All right. So it says, Yahweh Shah is going to do it all over again, man. All right. It says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. And one of the main plagues is going to be famine. All right. Inflate. We, we see all kinds of plagues going on right now, man. Inflation. All right. But the main plague, you know, is going to be them thermonuclear missiles, of course. But before they, those hit, all right, you're going to have famine. You're going to have, you know, destruction, the sword. You know, so pretty much nobody is safe out here, man. All right. If you're not of the elect, you're not safe out here. So, like, I meant the word like that. If you're not of the elect, you're not safe. All right. Because you understand that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai promised the elect that he's going to protect them. All right. The elect are those that have been chosen from the foundation of the world. You know, but we don't know that, you know, that we're of the elect. That's why we're pushing, you know, to make, to make our calling and election sure. You know, because we've been called to this truth. You know, we're just fighting, all right, to make it, man. We're, hey, we're fighting for our crown, man. All right? So, therefore, when Yahweh shall return, you know, look, when Yahweh shall return, you know, we're, we're, we're either going to hear two things or no, two things from him. All right, two things going to come out of his mouth concerning us, all right? Well done, thou good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. You know, we're looking to you know to hear, well, well, uh, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, and I think about it all the time, man. You know, I think about it all the time, man. You know, when the Lord return, man, I really want to hear, you know, I pray to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, and that's why I push, you know, according to my, me my measure, of course, I push, you know, uh, you know, the best that I can, man. You know, because, hey, we're not guaranteed a spot on the chariots, you know, unless you have the elect, of course, but we're not guaranteed a spot on the chariots until we make it, man. You know. But, like I said, I'm going to switch gears, you know, and um, speak about this a little bit. All right? Speak about, speak about this a little bit because this is this is the time that we're living in, you know, where Esau, Edom is going to... um. You know, Esau Edom is gonna, you know, bring bring this uh, economy to a halt. You know, ultimately it's the Heavenly Father, because during this time, you know, all that pride, you know, all that wickedness is gonna be put down, and and, and we're gonna see the real come out. Then we're gonna, we're gonna see the, the 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 realness of people come out. All right, the the the, the intents of people come out because when people when people gotta survive. They're gonna go through the through uh through through the uh, through the lengths to uh, to survive, man. You know, through a famine, all right, the lack of bread and water, all right, you gotta survive from being killed. You know, so when people gotta survive, they're gonna go through the through the to uh to, to the lowest point, all right, to just get what they need. You know, cause right now the economy is, you know, it's, it's still running at, you know, at some kind of level. It's still running. But there's gonna come a time where, you know, everything gonna shut down, all right. You see that they're talking about cyber attacks, you know. They're talking about cyber attacks. We know Esau when he talks about something, you know, don't don't sleep on that, man. You know, because when Esau talk about cyber attacks, more than likely he's the one who's gonna do it. He just need an excuse. You know, he needs he need, he need a scapegoat, all right, to uh, to to put it on, man. You know, and this Russia Ukraine crisis going on right now is a perfect excuse to say, you know, look, Russia hit us Russia hit us with a cyber attack. All right, that's a perfect excuse, you know. You know, that's a perfect excuse, man, to use Russia with, with, with everything going on. You know, but ultimately know that this man have his hand in it, all right. There's a lot of things that happen within the uh, within America that Esau put it on, you know, another person, another nation, but he's the one actually doing it. But this is Revelation chapter 13. Go to Revelation Like it. Revelation chapter 13 and verse. Um, let's see where I want to start from. Verse 16. I'm gonna get straight to the point. You know, 
Matter of fact, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start from the 11th verse because, you know, before that chip is in implemented, they had to set the system up, right? All right, that system that that we did see being set up during the whole, you know, pandemic. All right, Esau. All right, was telling everybody to take, you know, take the, you know, the juice. You know, Esau was telling them to take the juice. Now he's telling everybody, you know, it's okay. All right, you, hey, we, you can lift the mandates. Hey, we've lifted the mandates. All right, you don't gotta take it no more. All right, you can go and you know, roam out in, uh, roam out in the economy again. All right, and pretty much what he did, what what he was doing was setting up the system for the MOTB to work, man. All right, the five G towers were being set up during during all this, man. You know, so a lot of these people that took, a lot of these people that took that juice. All right, they're either they they've either dropped that slot here. Damn, I'm always twisting my words up, man. Slaki. They either drop dead or, all right, they're in a, they're in a uh, sick condition right now, you know? So, the joke's on them because, the joke's on them because during during this whole pandemic thing that was going on, you know, they were telling, they were making jokes to people. Slaki, they were mocking people. They were getting on people to take that thing, you know? But pretty much, those that didn't take it, they're doing better than those that did take it, man. You know? So, now we see who the jokes are really on, man. But this is Revelation 13 and verse 11. And it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. You know, talking about America, man. You know? Because, like, hey, John on the Isle of Patmos was seeing visions, all right? Those visions meant something. You know, he didn't understand it, but... In these times today, all right, the prophets understand it, all right, because Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know, has revealed it. You no, know, everything is revealed in these days. You know, what, pretty much what I'm saying is that the prophets that were given the visions in the ancient world, they did not under, uh, understand those visions at that time. But now we're in the last days to where the Lord has opened up the mind, starting with our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, you know, and their teachers before them, you know, and I, and I, and I keep bringing up the apostles and the elders because more was revealed unto them, you know, than the, than their uh than to their teachers. All right, because you know certain certain prophecies that um you know certain prophecies that you know Yahweh Bashmi Al Shad didn't reveal to their teachers. You know, he revealed to the apostles. All right, to where the truth is perfected, man, and it's all according to Yahweh Bashmi Al Shad. So we give praises to him for that. You know, because Abba Bivens, you know, if I'm not mistaken, when he taught, you know, he had taught that, you know. Only the so-called Negroes were Israelites, you know. So the truth had to be evolved at some point. Is what I'm trying to say. And I'm not downplaying none of the uh, the, the teachers before our before the apostles. I'm just saying that the Lord gave the truth, you know, or giving you know in increments of the truth at a time. But then you know gave you no know, work through the apostles to uh you know he opened their minds up to what you know we know now. You know, we have a hundred we have a hundred percent truth. According to what Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai gave us, man, you know. But um, Revelations 14 and verse uh, 11, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and that's talking about America, you know, because when you think of a lamb, a lamb is a, is a, is a docile creature, sweet creature, and that's how America pre uh, presented itself, you know, at, at its earlier years. You know, America, you know, started off as a so-called Christian nation, all right with morals, they have some kind of morals, you know, because they were trying to base themselves off of the Bible, you know, but, but we understand that the, um, the founding forefathers were Masons, of course, you know, but America, America, uh, the, the, the people of America here, the Edomites, you know, at, at the earlier stages, they presented themselves as Christians, they made it seem as though they were all about the Bible, so they presented themselves as a lamb, harmless, all right, but he spake as a dragon. Why? Because eventually, you know, you know, Esau Edom is going to put in draconian mandates in place. We saw we saw uh, uh, an increment of that when, you know, this whole pandemic thing was going on to where they were putting in mandates, so on and so forth. Well, that was only a test because they were seeing who was uh, who was down with the agenda. Now, the second time around, something is really going to happen. And, you know, because they need something to happen to get the minds of the people uh, uh, shaken, scared. Because the first thing that happened, people wasn't falling for it, all right? Of course, you have people that fell for it, 
But then again, you had a, you had a lot of people that saw the bullshit. So now Esau is gonna make something happen to where people are gonna be very afraid to the point that whatever you say they're gonna do, you know. So it's gonna come down to that point. But eventually Esau is gonna put in that draconian man, uh, uh, draconian order in place, man. All right. When you speak as a dragon, you know because the ancient Roman Empire was mentioned as a dragon. You know, it's represented as a dragon because of the harshness of that empire, the draconianism of that empire, you know. And it says, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And that, that first beast is the ancient Roman Empire, you know. And we notice, and we know that that first beast is the ancient Roman Empire because the ancient Roman Empire fell for a period of 1,000 years, thus being wounded, you know? And how was that first beast worship? Well, the waves of the ancient Roman Empire, all right, are implemented here in Babylon, the great America, all right? Such as shopping malls, such as, you know, um, the architecture, you know, such as the language. A lot of our language that we speak today and around the world goes back to the Roman uh, Latin, you know? So people, that's how people worship you know the ancient Roman Empire, man, by you know indulging in the in, in the in the ways of the ancient Roman Empire, man. You know they're all at it. You know that's really what's going on. Is that America is pretty much repeating what the ancient Roman Empire did. So America is a revival of the ancient Roman Empire. Is what I'm saying. All right, and it says <clears throat> right uh, verse 13, and he do a great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men right because Esau is always dropping bombs on people man all right America NATO and the EU you know and it's and, and something that always come to mind is Yugoslavia how they bombed that place he was literally making fire come down from heaven you know um Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the other um cities around about it you know they drop atomic bombs in them places man he made fire come from heaven you know so nothing new under the sun all right, because uh, the ancient Roman Empire, you know, what they used to do was them that, that little catapult system to where they catapult, you know, stones with fire upon them uh, to the enemies, man. You know, so we can say in that time, those were the so called bombs in that time coming from heavens, you know, but in these times, you know, those, uh, they have that technology to where they can create bombs. They can, you know, matter of fact, let me get that real quick. They have the technology to where they can splice atoms make bombs, you know, and pretty much destroy everything, man. Thus making fire come out of heaven, coming from the sky, all right? This is um, Isaiah the 54th chapter. Let me get that real quick. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 16, it says, Behold, I have created the smith that blow up the coals in the fire and, and, uh, and that bring it forth an instrument for his work and I have created the waster to destroy. You know, and that smith is talking about the modern day scientist. Because when you think about a smith, when you know about a smith in the ancient world, that was somebody that forged the weapons. You know, they they they, they uh you know put the the weapons to the fire, alright, they beat that thing, alright to forge it into they wanted to be. Well today that's a scientist, you know, that the Lord gave the wisdom to um splice atoms, you know, to where they can create, you know, nuclear bombs, I mean, atomic bombs. You know, and that scientist, you know, who created that was um, uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer. Let me see if I can look him up real quick. See if I'm if I'm saying his name right. I know his name was Oppenheimer. And what did he say? He said that I become the destroyer of worlds, man. Showing you that what the scriptures say, man. His name was J. Robert uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, all right, and he's he's um called the Godfather, all right, of atomic bombs, if I'm not mistaken. You see, see, yeah. Let me read something about him real quick. So this is John uh, J. Robert J. Robert Oppenheimer, and in full, Julius Robert Oppenheimer. I don't know why I'm saying Robert. Robert Oppenheimer, born April 22nd, 1904, New York, 
New York, United States. Died February 18th, 1967. All right. And it says, American theoretical physicist and science administrator noted as director of Los Alamos Laboratory during the development of the atomic bomb and as director of the Institute for Advanced Study. So he was at the forefront of the atomic bomb, man. You know, and, I, and if I can recall within his speech, you know, he said, um, let me see if I can recall. He said within his speech, he said that, um, when the atomic bomb was dropped on, um, you no know, Japan, those Japanese people over there with our, which are Ammonites, that's, you know, um, what was it? I can't recall it, you know, exactly, but during, in that room, the Edomites, they were happy. Or was it happy or sad? I can recall. I forgot what it was. So forgive me for that. Because I had read upon that. You know, but there were some individuals that had smiles on their face when those bombs were dropped. Showing you that Esau is that sword, man. This man is the devil. They, they love bloodshed, man. You know, but it was somewhere where I read that on the, on the internet where, on YouTube, where I watched and read, you know, in his speech that he was happy. That there was some happiness in the, um, in the air when them things were dropped. You know, I gotta look. I gotta look upon that again. You know, Lord willing, I can. But um, verse thirteen. I'm gonna read that again. And he do of great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live, you know? And these miracles, man, the technology that Esau got today, all right, this is his miracles, man, you know? Because, you know, you got, you got the um, artificial intelligence, the AI, all right? You got, you know what I'm saying, the different technology, televisions, you know, people are amazed at that, man. And, then, and I'm gonna say this, if, uh, if, if the Romans, all right, back then were to come today, they be all that the technologies, man. At the technology that uh, uh, Esau got today, they'd be uh, surprised at that, you know. Therefore, you know, they're amazed at the, uh, the the technology, and Esau is about to release a lot more deception and technology to where these people are gonna be, you know, amazed at that, man. You know, they gonna be a, hey, they gonna be so deceived that they gonna take that chip, man. So I'm gonna continue reading, and it says. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read that end, uh, the end of uh, Slaka, the latter part of that verse again, and it says, "And uh, Slaka, it says, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they shall make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live." All right, and you know, the way some uh, Israelite camps break that down, they talk, they, they they say that the image of the beast is talking about, you know. That picture of Cesare Borgia, you know, that depiction, you know, the, the picture of Jesus Christ. They say that's the image of the beast, which is completely going off. You know, that image of the beast, it goes deeper than just, you know, the picture of so-called Jesus. All right, that image is talking about the ancient ways, or right, the ancient system, or right, the system of the Roman Empire, which it, which uh, have been brought back through America, NATO, and the EU, you know. It says, um, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. All right. So they brought back all right, that ancient Roman system, man. All right. Like I like I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the shopping malls, the architecture, all right, the language, you know. So a lot of things that we see here today goes back to the ancient Roman Empire. But Esau is going to take it up a notch, man. All right. He's going to take it up a notch to the point where you know, that draconianism, all right, is going to come out. Just like the ancient Roman Empire was, was a draconian system, had, had that draconian system, all right, Esau is going to take it up to that level. He's he going to bring it there, man. You know, to the point where if you don't take that, you no, know, the, if you don't take this, then you, you're you not going to be able to participate in society, all right? And it's going to get to the point where if you don't take that, then, you know, you're eventually going to be put to death, you know? You're eventually going to be put to death. So it says, and he had, oh, so like I already read that. Verse 16, and it says, and he calls it for all, both small and great, 
rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their forehead. And that mark is what I've been showing you the whole time. All right, with the little the little chip implant, man. All right, look up Sweden. Sweden, Sweden, they a hey, that population is finished, man. They already got it. All right, they living it up as though they they, they got some kind of victory, as if you know they're they, you know they're on the top of the world. Sweden, a hey, Sweden living up, you know. But yeah, how about Shimia Osha is gonna utterly destroy that place, man? All right, by way of thermonuclear missiles, because that judgment set for those that take the thermonuclear missiles, all right. It's thermonuclear fire, you know. The Lord said, whoever take that chip, they're going to be destroyed by that fire, man. They're going to be tormented. So we know that Sweden ain't going to be hit, you know. Verse 16, it says, And he calls it for all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand on their forehead, all right? Now, I just want to go into that word mark real quick because... With a lot of false prophets out there, they're saying that the mark is spiritual, you know. They're saying that the mark is spiritual. And and, and you got a lot of blood on your hands for that, man. Alright, because a lot of Israelites is not it doesn't have in their mind that, you know, the chip is the mark. And pretty much, when the time comes, they're not going to be strong enough to, uh, to, to fight against that, man. Which ultimately means that they weren't of the elect. But the way the story goes, man. A lot of these guys teaching against that the mark is the um, the MOTB, and they doing it just to be contrary too, man. You know they they, they don't want to give double uh, double honors to the uh, to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. All right, they don't want to come up under no authority, you know, you know, humble down, you know. But the time is going to come to 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 the point where you you you're going to wish that you did the right thing, man. And it says, go to the word mark, and it says um. The word mark and it says karagma. All right, karagma. That's the word there for mark, the Greek word for mark. And it says a stamp, an imprinted mark. So that's why that's why you know it's a physical mark, an imprinted mark, right? I'm gonna continue reading. Of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers, and it says antichrist, but we know that the scripture says there are many antichrists, there's not just one antichrist. That's gonna rise up out of the ashes. All right. That the, it's talking antichrist is pretty much you know anti messiah, anti mashiach. That's that spirit that's in the earth right now, man. Damn. That's the spirit that's in the earth right now. Anti mashiachs. Those are against Yahweh Shah, man. The true doctrine of the book. But as the following goes, you know, the main anti mashiach is Esau Edom. All right. And pretty much. His mark, his badge of servitude is going to be that implantable chip, you know? It says, thing, carved, sculpture, graven work of idolatrous images, all right? So, again, that's how you know it's something physical. Thing, carved. They're going to use, man, call it all y'all about some y'all shut I had the right images for that too, man. All right, they're going to use this to carve this into your skin. All right, they're gonna prick this into your skin. Damn, water got water in right there. But they're gonna use, so like it. They're gonna use this to put this into your skin, thus fulfilling this. All right, they're gonna carve it into your skin. You know, so therefore, therefore, <laughs> you know, that's how we know it's a physical mark. Thing carved. Sculpture, graven work of idolatrous images, man. You know, and we know that 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 main idol is that chip that Esau is gonna push forward. All right, he's gonna present that thing as a way of salvation. You know, because when he crashed the economy, economy, a lot of people is gonna, a lot of people is gonna be bugging out. They're gonna be in heaviness of heart, all right, not knowing what the hell to do. And then here comes Esau with his solution. Hey, how about you take this and you'll be all right. You know. Take this and you'll be all right. But we know, all right, we know and we've been commanded to not take that thing, man. And we got to put our trust in how about Shimia Osha. All right, because those that do take that chip, you know, what that means essentially is you're marrying yourself to the system. Therefore, uh, committing fornication, all right, against your how about Shimia Osha. Spiritual fornication, 
all right? Because we're the people of the Lord. We're married to the Lord, all right? We're married to the Lord. Therefore, when you take that chip, you know, you're pretty much mirroring yourself to the beef system, therefore committing fornication. And we know the judgment, all right, for committing fornication or adultery, man. That's to be put to death, all right? And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to put you to death by fire, you know? Verse, um, it's like not verse, but going deeper into that, well, the, uh, going back deeper to the word, it goes back to the word karax. It says, a pale or a stake, a palisade. All right. Now, what is what is a a, a, a pill? I mean, it's like a stake. This is a stake right here. This right here is a stake. All right, a wooden stake. Pretty much, it's like uh, when you see um, I don't know if you're if you've ever seen it. When people are putting down fences, all right, what you see them putting down is you know is a stake, man. Uh, when they hammering that down to the ground, you know, they um, how can I put? They're 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 graving it into the ground, man. Like they're they're pushing into the ground. Well, likewise with that chip, all right. What I just showed you on my phone of that stake, it looks just like that. You see, that pointy end, that's gonna go into it. So we know that, man. We know we we know what it is, man. All right. All of this, all of this, you know, you gotta be given the spiritual eyes to see it, man. It's plain, you know, to uh, to to, uh, to see it. You know, pales between uh, uh, which earth, stones, trees, and timbers are heaped and packed together. You no, know, but the point was, stake. All right, and we can see how we can see how the the, the stake, you know, the, the tree stake, and the device, the little the little pointy device that they're gonna put that chip inside you with. We can see how that, you know, compares with each other, man. They're the same. They, they look the same. So we've been given the wisdom to see these things, man. So it says, and he calls it, all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, and I just proved to you uh, why that mark is the uh, implantable chip, all right? I just showed you why that mark is the implantable chip. At this point, you can't say, you can't say, you know it's anything else or else you know of course you are, uh, you've been paid off and you're an agent you know but other than that it's plain to see verse 17 it says and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name and also eventually it's gonna come down to the point where you know Esau implements his chip all right and um really you're not gonna be able to buy or sell without it you know and like and, and like I stated earlier what you see going on with all this uh, commotion, all right, in the economy, all right, this inflation, gas prices don't reach six dollars already, man, all right, a gallon. So, this inflation will potentially lead to the crash of the dollar, man. All right, Lord willing, it does, man, because if the hey, if the dollar crash, that means the MOTB will be implemented, and if the MOTB is implemented, that means that, that the, the destruction follows, and if the destruction follows, all right, by way, you know, of World War Three. You know, and various other things. Yahweh Shah comes back, man. All right. And we know one thing. One thing that we do know is that when Yahweh Shah returns, um, Salakin, is that when World War Three happens, Yahweh Shah is coming in the middle of that, man, to make war with these uh, heathen nations, man. You know, and that's why we so fervently hope that, you know, um, that chip be be made mandatory, man. Now a lot of people will hear that and say, "You niggas crazy. Why would you want the uh, if if if, if the chip, you know, is the uh." chip is the MOTB, you know, and, you know, you'll be destroyed if you take it. Why would you want it to come to pass? Well, simply put, all right, we need that prophecy to happen in order for you know, World War III to happen, and then for Yahweh Shah to come back, you know, and to destroy these heathens, man, starting with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, all right, pretty much, you know, like, like I said, man, a lot of people hear that and say, you niggas crazy, you know, but at the end of the day, we, hey, we we in we in our right mind because our mind our mindset is pretty much to make it out of here, man. To get out of here, get the kingdom. That's what our mindset is, man. You know, see a lot of Jake. Their thing is that they they're comfortable here in captivity. They want to stay here in America, Babylon, the Great, man. All right, the little perks. All right, they 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 like the the, the fame, the riches. You know, 
they, they like all that, you know, but still in captivity under the so-called white man. What we're talking about is power, rulership, man. We're talking about, hey, we getting ready to be uh, uh, rulers, man, judges, all right? Matter of fact, let me get that in the book of Revelation also. Um, let me get that in the book of, in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 5 and verse I'm going to start from verse 6 just to get the point because this is talking about Yahweh and Yahweh is our salvation and he's ultimately going to come back and deliver us from you know this hellhole called America and wherever we'll be scattered to so this is um Revelation 6 and verse, uh, Salakia 5 and verse 6, and it says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as he had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are seven spirits of the seven spirits of the Most High, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the uh, throne. All right, and him that sat upon the throne is the heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right, and him that came and took the book out of his right hand is Yahweh Shah. All right, who was worthy? To, who was worthy to do so? And it says, and when he had uh, taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them har uh, harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to the Most High by thy blood out of, out of every kindred and, uh, and tongue and people and nation. All right, showing you that all right, we've been scattered into all nations. All right, and I want to make the point also that, therefore, us being scattered into all nations, we're going to look like the other nations. All right, we're going to look like so-called white people, you know, and that's going to be a big, that, that's a major stumbling block unto uh, Jake, man. Is that you're going to have Israelites, our brothers and sisters, that look like so-called white people with the blonde hair and blue eyes. That look like Elamites, East, East Indians. That look like so-called Japanese and Chinese people, man. You know, our brothers and our sisters are going to look like that, man. And you're going to be surprised when your house shall return, who he gather. You know, you know it's not going to be a surprise to us, you know, because we know according to the spirit. All right, we know according to the spirit. All right, who, who are Israelites and who's not, man? All right, so therefore with us, it's not a carnal thing. It's a spiritual thing. All right, it's not a color thing. All right, it's a spiritual thing. We can, you know, we can see the spirits on, uh, you know, these Israelites out here and tell that they're Israelites, man. All right, and likewise with a so-called black person. That so-called black person may very well go back to an Edomite, you know? It's all according to the spirit and the lineage of that person, that man or woman and child, man, you know? But that, I wanted to make that point showing you that we've been scattered into all nations. But the point really is in um, verse 10. And it says, And has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And this is why we so fervently hope for these prophecies. You know, you know, you know, why, why, why we hasten these prophecies to come and pass. Because, you know, what's getting ready to happen on this planet earth is the Israelites are being set up as kings and rulers, judges. All right. We're about to be made kings and rulers under Yahweh, King David, man. You know, and then you're gonna have that governing body, the 144,000. All right, and then you're gonna have the rest of the elect, men, women, and children, man. But nevertheless, all right, to be part of that number, the elect, you know, that elect number is heavy, man. You know, cause that, hey, what that mean is that, what that mean is that, you're gonna see the kingdom of heaven be built up. All right, you're gonna see the kingdom, of, you're gonna witness the kingdom of heaven. All right, be built up by these heathens. All right, and pretty much, uh. uh be able to tell the story all right to your children your grandchildren and them you know after them you know about the kingdom of uh, heaven being built up all right you know as a matter of fact if you if, hey, if you make if you're of the elect man you know if you're of the elect you're not going to taste you know of course granted granted that there is some of the elect that will taste death of course that will you know die for the testimony of Yahweh Shah you know but if you're of the elect you know you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna taste death. You're gonna have a transition into the kingdom, man. You know? This is Matthew 16 and verse uh, 28. 
It says, it's lucky. Now I'm going to start from um, verse 27. Because this is Yahushua talking about you know, his return. All right? And we know that when Yahushua return, he's coming to gather the elect. So verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Showing you that the Lord is coming with judgment. All right? He's not just coming to save, but also he's coming to destroy. All right? And to judge. All right? And we know the majority of these people out here. All right, are right, into wickedness, so we know that the Lord, is, the Lord is coming to do a lot of cleanup. All right, to uh, up, upon uh, upon this earth, because Yahusha is coming to clean up, man. All right, verse twenty-eight. Verily I say unto you, there be some, uh, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. All right. So, what does that mean? All right. You no, know, there's going to be uh, elect men, women, and children. That will not die, all right, and will make a smooth transition, all right, not smooth transition, all right, that, that are going to make a transition into the kingdom of heaven, you know, slip of words. It's not going to be a smooth transition. It's going to be a bumpy ride because, all right, we're, going, we're all going to we're, we're all going to have to be tried and tested, all right, all right, to be worthy of, of the kingdom, man. You know, but the point being is that there's going to be a lot of men, women, and children that are not going to die, you know, of the elect that are not going to die on this side. And just gonna you know go to the kingdom of heaven, man. When Yahweh shall return, man, you know that is why you know we want America to be destroyed. If this is the place of our captivity, all right, we suffering over here, man. You know, Jake is suffering, man. Jake is homeless. You know, barefooted on the concrete. All right, the women, our, our women are all bugged out. Our women are against us. All right, they love the so-called white man. All right. So-called black woman is the is, is, is the worst, man, on this side. You know, but in the kingdom of heaven, man, you know, so-called black woman is gonna be in order. So-called Latino and Native American woman gonna be in order. Alright. But the Judite woman in particular, alright, is uh is hand joining hand with the so-called white man to destroy us, man. Hence child support. Alright. You know, they they uh, so Esau made sure, Esau made sure, alright, to set that standard in place that all right, look, I'm gonna give you child support, but better not have no man in the house, you know? And the so-called white man wanting that, uh, Slaki, the so-called black woman, you know, chooses, you know, the child support, the government aid above her husband. Showing you that how Esau pretty much turned, you know, the, 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 the Israelite woman against the Israelite man. Uh, hey, there ain't gonna be none of that shit in the kingdom. As a matter of fact, the Edomites are gonna be in pits doing serving their captivity a harsh captivity and eventually they're going to be cut off all right they're going to be burnt with fire thus said obadiah 118 all right these elite bankers you know they have the power of the earth in their hands and still and still not satisfied man these elites they have every they have everything man and still not satisfied man you know so pretty much it's like you. so pretty much you know, what they have is going to be taken away from them. The kingdom will be translated to the Israelites. You know, matter of fact, let me uh, let me get this real quick. In Ecclesiastes, Sirach, because yeah, this speaks about how the elite, you know, got what they got, got their riches, but also this this um, it gives you a glimpse, you know, of how Israel is going to be given the kingdom. By way, by, by way of our Lord Yahweh Shah. This is Ecclesiasticus Sirach in verse 8. It says, Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Now, now if you uh if you take out the unrighteous dealings, you take out the uh I'm not removing from the, from the word, but I'm, what I'm saying is that you turn that upside down to righteous dealings and not injuries and the rich is not gotten by the seat the kingdom is going to be translated in righteousness because Yahweh Shah is returning all right with righteous anger righteous and you know with indignation righteous anger man he's coming back to recompense all right and to take and to take the kingdom from Esau Edom you see what I mean let me get this real quick in Revelation the 19th chapter No, 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 let me slot you. Let me go. Let me go to Daniel. Let me go to Daniel. 
This is the book of Daniel, second chapter. This is the book of Daniel, the second chapter, and the verse, and verse, uh, Yeah, this is Daniel chapter um, 2 and verse 31. You know, pretty much going into Yahusha returning and destroying all these kingdoms, man. The book of Daniel 7 chapter also talks about it. The four beasts, all right, and then that extension of the fourth beast, which is America. And then that fourth, you know, that fourth beast will be thrown into, you know, uh, will be utterly destroyed by fire. You know, that fourth beast being the American native in the EU, all right, will be destroyed utterly. Because Esau, all right, that uh, the, the beast is a representation of Esau's rulership, his system. So Esau is going to be completely taken out of rulership, and then the Edomites will be destroyed utterly. All right, thus fulfilling them not being shown mercy. But this is Daniel chapter two and verse thirty-one. It says, "Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible." This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part clay. You know, and pretty much what I wanted to get to was, well, I'm going to start from where it says the head was of gold. And the head of gold represents the, Bab the, the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. All right. The, uh, the breast represents the Medo, the Medo Persian Empire. All right, the arms of silver, the Greek Empire. Let me slow down. I'm going a little too fast. The legs, um, the legs of iron represents the Roman Empire. I'm tripping. His belly and his thighs of brass represents the Greek Empire. I'm, I'm, I'm going too fast. Lock in. That's the Greek Empire. His legs of iron, his feet, part uh, part of iron and part of clay, that represents where we at right now, all right, which is the divided kingdom, all right, because the EU, is, is, hey, they're divided. Edomites are divided, man. But Salakia, y'all was going a little too fast. But it says, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. You know, and that's talking about Yahweh Shah. That stone represent Yahweh Shah who's gonna come and take out all these rulerships, you know, and set up his kingdom, you know. But yeah, man, Salaki for that. I was going too fast, you know. <clears throat> but this is Revelation, the 19th chapter, and the uh, let me see, verse 11, and this is going into Yahweh Shah coming back to conquer the, the the heathen nations, and it says, verse 11, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. You no, know, and that white horse represents that chariot. All right, because uh, white represents purity. Like it. White represents purity, and the horse represents power. See, Hawsha is coming back with pure power. All right, him and his um and the, and the holy angels. Right, and it says, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So, Hawsha is coming back to make righteous war with the heathen nations. You see what I'm saying? Because he, he's coming back in the authority of his father, Yahweh. He's coming back, all right, in the name of Yahweh. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. You know, and that those many crowns represents they are, that credit that he's going to have for taking down the heathen nations, taking down the heathen rulership. Because it you no know, entirely what, the, what, what, what a crown represents, you know, is rulership. So the many crowns that he's going to have represents, all right, the different rulerships that he's coming back to take down, man, you know. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And that word name, you know, again, going back to authority, all right, because Yahweh is the only one who's been given the authority, all right, of second place in the heavens, of second place in existence, you know. So nobody, nobody in heaven, nobody in heaven or on earth have been put in the authority of our Lord Yahweh Shah. 
all right? And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahweh. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, you know, showing you that the angels that are, that are going to come, you can read about that in the book of Jude where it says that the Lord come, is coming with thousands of his angels, you know, to, uh, to render judgment. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Because Yahweh Shai is coming back with judgment, all right? And he's coming back with all the angels, all right, to destroy Esau and his empire. But this is Jude chapter 1 and verse... It's like Jude chapter 1. <clears throat> Verse 14, it says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. You see? So Enoch prophesied, you know, talking about Yahweh Shah coming back, all right, with 10,000 of his saints, with all the, which are the angels, you know, because Yahweh Shah is coming back with the angels, man, to, uh, to conquer, to destroy, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly, among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them, because beginning with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, all right, the pride, you know, the pride within this world, on this earth, is great. So Yahweh Shah is coming back, all right, to judge them according to the proud speeches, the proud words that have been spoken against the Heavenly Father and Himself, all right? He's coming back to uh, to, to, to address all that, man. You know, the heathen, all right, Moab, the so-called Chinese, talking about some damn um, artificial sun. That's them puffing their chest at Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, all right? What's wrong with the sun that we see out here right now, man? What's wrong with that? All right? That was given to us for, uh, for light by day, man. You know? What's wrong with that? See, these heathens, they wanna, they, they, they're they they trying to cast off, all right, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai's works, all right? In a roundabout way, they're trying to put out, you know, they're, they're trying to say that the Lord don't exist. You know, we're, we're the most high, all right? Esau, Edom, he's saying that, you know, I'm the most high. I'm, you know, I'm God. That's what Esau is saying, man, you know? Pretty much trying to put out the remembrance, trying to put out the remembrance of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You know? You know, and, and, and like the book of uh like the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter say, you know, they're trying to cut us off from being a nation, you know, and, and us being the true people of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, all right, so-called Negroes down to the Mexicans, you know, the Israelites, us being the people of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, all right, <clears throat> the true people. We worship him in, in, in truth and um, truth and sincerity, all right, truth and spirit. Therefore, if they try to cut us off from being a nation, that means that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah will not be worshipped on this planet. See, the Lord being worshipped from this planet, it starts with, it starts with us as a nation, man. All right. Hence, why you see Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah raising up the true believers, raising up the hopeful elect ones uh, uh, in these times, man. You know, raising up the elect. You know, cause I, you know, I have a habit of saying, you know, hopeful elect. You know, when when speaking on these things, but. You know, when we think about it, the Lord, he's raising up his elect, all right, because it, it all starts with the Israelites, because when the Israelites be put in that authority, be put in that rulership authority, you know, um, the heathen nations are going to come to us to uh, to uh, to learn how to worship Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. The book of Michael, the fourth chapter, say that, all right, that the heathen nations are going to come to uh, to the to the hill, to the, to the mountain of you know, Zion, the mountain of the Lord, Yahweh, to, uh, to worship, man. To learn how to worship, cause I, I don't, um, I'm gonna get that little willing. I want to finish this point that I'm making. Um, Revelation 19 chapter, <clears throat> and it says, verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty Yahweh and he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords so Yahweh Shah is coming back you know to take to take down his king uh, these, uh, the kingdoms that are going to be on the earth when he uh, returns man alright 
Because the kingdom of heaven ain't gonna have no joint rulership. You know, and it's not gonna be a joint rulership of Esau, so-called white people, and, and, and the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of Yahweh, the Israelites. It's not gonna be that, man. All right. That's why scripture says that Esau is going Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Because Esau, Esau gotta be put out. Esau gotta go. Alright? These Edomites gotta go, man. Alright, before we can rule. They gotta be put into change, captivity, man. You know? You know, wickedness and um righteousness is not gonna be it's not gonna uh it's not gonna flourish on the same level. Which is why, you know, which is why, you know, we, we see all the wickedness being done right now. That's just wickedness fulfilling, being fulfilled, man. You know, to its fullest measure. All right? That's why the wicked, the, 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 the wicked is in rulership right now. You know? Because he's fulfilling his life as the wicked. Therefore, that's why we see all the abominations being done. So likewise, when the kingdom of heaven is set up, righteousness is going to flourish, man. You know? Um... I want to go to Micah to, to, to finish off on that point. What I was saying about this is the book of Micah. So like, let me see if I can find that real quick. Yep. <clears throat> I'm in Micah. But this is the book of Micah, the fourth chapter. And as you can see, it says mountain of the Lord right there. You see that? Mountain of the Lord. The mountain of the Lord, you know, are the Israelites, the government of Israel. Are starting with our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right? Mount Zion. Um, Micah chapter 4 and verse 1, it says, But in, these la in the last days it shall come to pass. <clears throat> That the mountain of the Lord, so like that the mountain of the house of the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahushah, shall be established in the top mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. All right. So the mountain of the Lord, which are the Israelites, the nation of Israel, is going to be exalted, you know, on the earth when the kingdom of heaven is set up, and the people shall flow unto it. The heathen nations are going to flow on, flow onto the Israelites. Right. It says. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. And the hills represents the smaller governments, man. You know, meaning that we're going to be at the top, you know, in the new world. All right? We're going to be at the top. The, uh, the least Israelite is going to be better than the heathen nations, man. All right? That's why the Lord Yahweh said that, you know, um, it's like it. when he was speaking about John the Baptist, he said that, um, verily I say unto you, you know, um, he that is least in the kingdom is going to be, you know, let me see, let me see if I can find that real quick, just to make that point, you know, I don't, I don't mean to draw the point out, I just want to make that point. Matthew 11 and 11, it says, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Why? Because in the kingdom of heaven, all right, we're going to be perfect. In the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have the law, statutes, and commandments written in our inward parts in our minds, man. So, because John the Baptist was not perfect, all right? He didn't have the laws written in his, part, uh, his inward parts, all right? So that's why in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have the, uh, the laws in our inward parts, which is going to make us perfect because we're not going to be able to go off. Never. All right, we're not going to ever go off, man. You know? So, the least in the kingdom of heaven, all right, is going to be greater than John the Baptist. All right? So, this is uh, verse 3, and it says, And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. Oh, Salaki. No, no, no. Verse 2, and it says, And many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, Yahweh, and to the house of the power of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. 
showing you what? That when all this is said and done, all right, and the kingdom of heaven is established, the heathens, all right, is going to come, all right, to us to learn how to worship Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Going to that point that I made before, when, and when, when the nations try to cut us off from being a nation, all right, they're also trying to cut off the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, all right, uh, in this earth because it starts with us, all right? It starts with the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? All right, worshiping, worshiping Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai in truth and sincerity, you know? So when they're trying to cut us off, they're also trying to cut the Heavenly Father off, all right, the names of Yahweh by Yahweh Shai, man, you know? So what, what, what am I trying to say about, uh, what am I trying to say in all this? I'm trying to say that they're trying to cut, you know, righteousness off from the earth. Because righteousness starts with the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Shai. All right, it starts with them, it starts with them and their names, man. So they're trying to cut all that off and trying to establish themselves as the as as, as the uh, God of the earth, you know. <clears throat> Verse three, and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Showing you right there that, you know, when we be, when we be put in the seat of, of authority, there's not going to be no war on this earth ever. Ain't going to be no war on this planet. And therefore proving the point that those Jews in the land of Israel that call themselves Israelis, they're not the people of the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. They're not the true people because if they were the true people, that means that there should be no more war in the land right now, man. There should be no war going on, being spoken of in the, even in the media, man, at all. But therefore, that's how we know that these are phonies, all right? The true people are, are the true people are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are in captivity right now, all right? And therefore, we're waiting. We're hey, we're just waiting. We're just waiting to be delivered from this captivity, man. And we, and when we be set up, Lord willing, we're the elect. You know, Lord willing, we're the elect. When we be set up, they're not gonna think of lifting a finger up against us, man. All right. If they do, we're gonna even we're gonna read, we're gonna have the ability to read their minds, man. We're gonna have spiritual power in these new bodies. We're gonna be reading their minds, and we're gonna see if they they even thinking of uh, rising up against us. All right. Esau, Edom, so-called white people, they're gonna be put out of the earth, you know, completely. So wickedness is gonna be out of there. But the heathen nations, they're gonna be judged for any wickedness that they do. All right. And it's gonna be righteous judgment, not the judgment according to Esau's you know, wicked judicial system, wicked laws, man. You know, but according to what's written in this book, because what's written in this book is going to be inside of us in the kingdom of heaven to come. All right. So, Lord willing, this camp video is edifying. I'm going to go ahead and end it off right there. You know, I'm going to end it off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect in this word and truth and sincerity. Until next time, I say Shalom.